Hi, I'm Swizzitz and this is Shoutem's React Native School. Today we're building an app that shows you the best places within walking distance. Here's how it works. You open the app, get a map with your current location, one, two, three, four, five, six different options to pick from. And if you say drinks on a Tuesday at 2 a.m., you get a bunch of recommendations in wherever you are, downtown San Francisco for me. You click on one of them and you see a picture with the top tip at that place. Click a different one, different picture. If you click food, you will get different recommendations. If you move the map, you will get new recommendations in a new location. In this lecture, you will learn how to do geolocation in React Native, how to use Airbnb's React Native maps to draw maps, and how to use Shoutem's UI toolkit to make styling a lot easier. Because this is a simple app, we're going to avoid using any state management libraries. Everything will go into app state. App at the top holds all of the state for our app, and then it trickles down to our components by props, and then we're gonna have one or two callbacks that go back up and change app state. Perfect. First, we'll need to install some dependencies. We're gonna use the Shoutem UI toolkit, um, to get styling and there's currently a bug in that library so we need react native vector icons and react native linear gradient for actually I don't I don't know why that fixes the problem because it's something to do with missing fonts but it helps so we need those two libraries and I hope the Shoutem UI toolkit gets updated very quickly then you need React Native Maps and you have to specify the 0.13 version because otherwise you get an older version that doesn't work with the latest React Native. I don't know why. And finally we're going to need Query String which is going to make it easier for us to talk to the Foursquare API. This is going to take a while so just run it all and wait. Okay. You've installed all your dependencies and you have the default React Native app running. So we go into index.ios.js, import examples from shoutem slash UI, remove all of the output from uh, the default app and change it with the examples component. And I'll show you what that does in a bit. Remove styles and now when we restart the app, we get to see all the different components that come with the toolkit. They look pretty nice, so it means we won't have to style anything ourselves. And in theory, you can click up here on the typography and you get a drop down menu so that you can see all the other components as well. But for some reason, it's crashing for me right now. Anyway, let's replace that with the app component and get some actual rendering going. I've already set up my app.js file in advance, so you don't have to sit there and watch me type, because that would be kind of boring. But we basically have a bunch of imports at the top. Then we have some constants for talking to the Foursquare API. And inside the app class, we start by instantiating the default state. We're going to have map region, which is going to tell us what the map is showing. GPS accuracy, which is going to be how accurate the current location is. Recommendations, which is the result of our call to the Foursquare API. Looking for, which is either food, drinks, shops, and so on. Then we have header location. That's something that Foursquare returns to tell us like a nice description of what we're currently looking for. And we have a timestamp of the last Foursquare call because we're going to use that so that we're not pinging the API too frequently. React Native uses an HTML, HTML5 polyfill to do geolocation. So you can do navigator.geolocation and then you have get position or something like that to get the current position. But more usefully, you can use watch position to create a callback function that updates every time the app detects a new user location. So what we're doing is we're starting a watch getting position, 
saving it in re in a region file because position returns a bunch of different things. Then we call on region change because we're going to use the same function as a callback from the map when user is zooming and panning around. And inside on region change, we save our new region to state. And this is going to trigger a re-render. So in render, we're going to show that on the screen so that we can see what the current geo position is. Right. We're going to return a screen component, which is very similar to a default view component, except that it gives us some styling as well. Inside, we're going to do a text that returns map region dot latitude and map region dot longitude uh, and renders them on the screen so we can see where the current location of our debugger is. And as you can see, we're getting an error because when it for when the app first loads, there's no geolocation yet. So what we have to do is we have to check if map region is there. And if it's not, we're going to return a spinner component, which looks like something is loading. There you go. We, there was a spinner at first and then there's a thingy on top. What we can also do is take styles centered for both of these uh, screens and styles come from uh, our own styles file which I just you can just copy it from github it's really not that important. What I really like about the iOS debugger simulator is that you can go to debug location and then pick different places of where you're supposed to be. Now where I am and where the Apple campus is are relatively close together so it's hard to see them in the geo position but in theory you could move you could use freeway drive and then this thing should update relatively frequently but I've never actually gotten it to work very reliably so okay. Time to render the map. We're going to remove our text stuff and replace it with recommendations map, which is our own component that I'm going to show you in just a bit. It takes all of our state as props because otherwise there would be too much typing. It takes on region change as the callback for zooming and panning. And just to make sure it correctly renders as full screen, we're going to take out the centered styling. The recommendations map component itself starts with a bunch of imports like we're already used to and then we use a functional stateless component because it doesn't actually have to do pretty much anything it's just rendering a map we're taking map region gps accuracy recommendations and all the other stuff because we're going to use it to render everything inside the map because if it's not nested in the map it's not going to show up on top of the map and that would look really weird to render the map, we use a component called map view, which on iOS is going to use Apple Maps and on Android it's going to use Google Maps. And we use an animate the animated version because otherwise we don't get really good feedback when we're zooming and panning. It looks kind of janky. And especially when the location moves because we're like driving on a freeway or something, the app won't update unless it knows it's animated. The map view component takes a region argument as what it's supposed to be showing. We're doing, we're adding a full screen style from our own style stuff. And then on region change is the official callback that we use for moving the map around. Inside the map view, we use a title component from the Shoutum toolkit to show some text on the top, which once we fill it in, is going to say, food in downtown San Francisco or drinks in the Tenderloin or whatever. And then we use two different circles to indicate the user's actual position on the map. A larger circle, which kind of relates to the accuracy of our current GPS information and a smaller circle, which is showing where exactly we think we are. And that's this tiny thing right here. Okay, now it's time to talk to the Foursquare API and get a list of recommendations within a certain area. It's kind of a lot of code, so I'm going to copy paste it and explain it to you. We have three different functions that all go into AppJS and I guess if you were using some sort of state management system, they would go into whatever you call the store. 
We have fetch venues, which takes a region and a query like food or drinks or whatever, and then uses the fetch, AP, the fetch HTML5 API to talk to Foursquare with a URL, gets a response. We have a little bit of logic to go through groups of recommendations. I don't know why they're in groups, but we go through the groups of recommendations and reduce them together into a single array, update header location with whatever the API returns, and update last Foursquare call with the new timestamp. The second function is shoot fetch venues, which takes uh, the new query and then essentially runs a glorified if statement that makes sure that if the new query is different than the old query, we always refetch. If we never had the timestamp yet, we always we refetch immediately. And otherwise we check that the new timestamp, that the latest timestamp is old enough to allow refetching. Now, the reason we do this is so that we are relatively nice to the Foursquare API. We only call it once every two seconds or something like that. And it also helps with general bandwidth and using the phone and things like that. It's a good idea to not try to talk to the internet every couple of milliseconds when you're on a phone. And the third function is venues query, which just builds the Foursquare query string for us using the aptly named query string library. The reason we use the li library to do this is because it looks really easy to just concatenate a bunch of strings with ampersands between them, but it's kind of annoying and this is so much easier to use. We need a client ID, a client secret, so that Foursquare knows who we are. Um, if you're implementing this yourself, please don't just steal them from me. Go to API for get your own. Uh, latitude, longitude, the accuracy of our latitude, longitude. I don't know what they do with that, but they need it. Uh, we tell it what we're looking for. The default is food. Otherwise, we're going to use whatever the user clicks. And we say we need 10 recommendations that are open and that have a photo. Now, if we add a console log for our recommendations into render, and we have to fetch venues on region change. Then you should be able to see that we get a bunch of recommendations every time we move the map. We get an array of 10 recommendations. Each has a reason for why it was recommended, which is usually going to be apparently empty. Uh, there's a tip. This one says late night Duke Bookie with ramen is the perfect nightcap, which I guess ramen at 4 a.m. makes sense. And then you have the venue, which gives you the uh, URL, some photos, and a bunch of things like that. We're going to use them to put markers on the map itself. To render the recommendations on our map, we go to recommendation to the recommendations map uh, file and map through all of the recommendations. And for each one, we return our custom recommendation function, which takes everything from each recommendation entry and a key so that React can tell them apart. Uh, our venue ID, and now if everything works, you should see a bunch of pointers on the map. And there they are. If you click on one of them, you will see that apparently at Dojima N, the service sucks, but the food is amazing. Let me show you what the recommendation component looks like. We open it up, and you'll see it's a class called recommendation that renders a map view marker. This is again something from Airbnb's React Native Maps uh, library. It renders these little markers on the map. And then we have a callout inside the marker, which is the tooltip. Then we use a Shoutem UI Toolkit's card component to render an image with an embedded view that has a subtitle and a caption. And I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. Now that we have our markers, we can go back to app.js and add a small on topic select function, which we're going to use to change the topic of what we're searching for. This is going to be a callback that goes into all of the different buttons that show up for food, drinks, shops, and so on. The function refetches venues and updates state for looking for. 
Now to render the actual buttons, we go back to our render function in app.js and if we don't have what we're looking for, then we use something called overlay topics and if we do know what we're looking for, then we use something called bottom topics. Overlay topics renders across our entire map or basically full screen on the app with a nice dark background and all of the buttons and if we click on it or if we click on one of the buttons we get an error. If we refresh and click again the error goes away and we can see all of our buttons on the bottom under the map. Overlay topics and bottom topics come from topics.js stateless functional components that return basically just different markup with the same array of buttons which should actually be a separate little component that we could just reuse in both of them but you know what copy paste is fine sometimes you can totally copy paste code if you want to and that's our lunch spot app if you want to see the code and play around you should go to the shoutem slash school repository on github look for lunch spot app and you can download it play around uh, you can also read more of the details about how the app works and how everything fits together by reading the article down there I'm going to link it both in the video and the video is embedded above the article. And if you like this sort of thing, if you want to build a different app every two weeks, you should subscribe by email and we will send you a new app every week, eh, every two weeks.